Electrochemical cells and batteries exist in many different forms and are a popular question type on the MCAT physical sciences because they are at the intersection of chemistry and physics. Most of them involve the transfer of chemical energy into electrical energy, although some, like electrolytic cells, operate in the reverse. They use electrical energy in order to produce chemical changes and chemical bonds. Before we go into the specific types, we should go over a big picture overview of the ways that electrochemical cells and batteries are unified. The first thing to recognize is this E standard here, or the standard reduction potential. What that is, is the amount of energy that is either released or used up when some ion is reduced into its neutrally charged form. So usually you'll see a cation gaining some number of electrons, and then it will become either a solid, liquid, or gas in its more natural form. One other thing to note about standard reduction potential is that it's only for the reduction, it's not for the oxidation, and that it is set so that the standard reduction potential of hydrogen, essentially two protons gaining two electrons, that one is set at zero. So your standard reduction potential for hydrogen is zero, and that is how they establish the scale for measuring these types of energies. Also be aware that if you have the standard reduction potential, but you're trying to figure out how much energy is yielded by oxidation, you just reverse the sign. So if the reduction potential is positive, the oxidation potential will be that same number, but negative. And that helps with energy calculations with all of these types of batteries. Another thing to be very, very comfortable with is what oxidation and reduction are and where they occur. You've probably heard the mnemonic device, Leo the lion goes grr, and you may have heard red cat anox, which says that reduction is at the cathode and the anode is where oxidation occurs. But rather than having two mnemonic devices, why don't we just combine them into one and simplify this discussion further? So what we've come up with here is Leo is a jerk. Leo, as you already know, stands for loss of electrons is oxidation. And the A is because this occurs at the anode. GERC stands for gain of electrons is reduction, which is something you might be quite familiar with. And remember that this occurs at the cathode. So just remember Leo is a jerk is a far better way of remembering it than Leo the lion goes grr and red cat and ox. And it will simplify your life when you're going through a problem like this on the MCAT. Leo is a jerk. Remember that sentence because it will help you out. The next thing is to figure out the maximum electrical potential that can be generated by this cell. That also tells you the voltage gradient that can be produced from one side to the other. And you find that by taking the reduction potential of the cathode and subtracting from that the reduction potential of the anode. Why do you subtract? The reason you subtract is because the anode sees an oxidation. And remember that you switch signs with the oxidation. So if we're looking at the reduction potential of the anode, we would have to subtract that, which has the same effect as adding the oxidation potential of the anode. And you may notice that I rewrote this here. The standard reduction potential of the cathode plus the oxidation standard potential at the anode is the way to think of that, and that gives you the maximum electrical potential across the battery. The last thing to be aware of is that any time you have a positive standard reduction potential maximum, you're going to have a spontaneous battery. Now, not all of these electrochemical cells are spontaneous, but if you have one that does operate spontaneously, it will have a positive Emax. And so be aware of that, and then we'll start going through the variations and the unifying principles of how electrochemical cells work.